Yeah, that that picture once that came in once that came into focus, the way that inflation really robs us of the value of our money in a way that explicit tax actually just takes your money from you, and implicit tax takes away the value of your money, and it's 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 the same effect through a couple of different doors. Yeah, and it's it, it's just complicated enough and not taught <laughs> in school enough that most people have like very little idea of what's actually going on. Yeah, they, they they feel the impact and they watch on the news as as inflation is discussed, not to the degree that it's seven percent per year, but that's what you that's what you end up feeling, and yet they can obscure they can obscure the source of it because no one is ever allowed to really look at don't, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain is the rule <laughs> with the Fed. Yeah, uh, that that whole uh, you you just referenced the Wizard of Oz. Um, there, there's mm. a whole interesting thing about how that's um, that's actually the story of the end of the gold standard and the Emerald City is uh, the greenback and you know the yellow brick road is the gold standard. Um, the cowardly lion are politicians and the uh, the scarecrow are farmers and uh, the the Tin Man are industrialists. It's it's like a whole allegory about that era and bringing in the Federal Reserve and so on. So it's that that's a whole rabbit hole that you can go down. And it, but the Wizard of Oz is actually a commentary on the monetary system that we have. I I okay. Let's let's explore that for a minute uh, if uh-huh. if we if we can. So I had I had heard something like that. I don't know that I'd ever been all the way down the rabbit hole, but just kind of unpack that because I think I'll have everyone's yeah, yeah. attention. So, so the idea is that uh, you know you have this wizard of Oz, right? That's great and powerful, and turns out to be this guy behind the curtain that's like le- uh, you know pulling a couple of levers. That that's that's the Federal Reserve. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's it's it's literally somebody yeah. like pulling a couple of levers and just hoping something happens. And it's the Emerald City because it's the greenback, the dollar. Uh, you know, the green is that color, and the yellow brick road is the gold standard, and sort of like the end of the gold standard, uh, ending at the um, the Emerald City. And uh, and Dorothy is like going with uh, you know these political constituents that uh, that ultimately all um, you know gave in to the Federal Reserve. This these are like the farmers um, at the time. There was uh, you know, before that, it was uh, the gold bugs and silver bugs. They tried to introduce bimetallism, and uh, and that that was a big monetary sort of conflict that a lot of farmers were engaged in. And in a sense, they they didn't have a brain, right? Like that mm-hmm. that was the thing. Uh, then you had you had you had the industrialists uh, who were you know the Rockefellers and the robber barons, right? The U.S. Steel, the J.P. Morgans, and all all, all of those people. Um, they, uh, if you read creature from Jekyll Island, you find out mm. like they're the ones that were actually responsible for the establishment mm. of the uh, Federal Reserve. And, you know, they're the ones without a heart, right? Like they <laughs> just have no compassion for anybody else. Just, you know, they're very, very selfish in that way. And then the cowardly lion, these were the politicians. Uh, and of course, they had no courage. So they, they just like let everything through because in a sense, they felt threatened by uh, by by all of these other constituents and they, that led to the establishment of the federal reserve and yeah i mean that that that's the interpretation that i heard i i've heard and i i think it's fairly accurate like if mm. you think about that era and the establishment of the federal reserve in 1913 and all the constituencies that came together to essentially create that uh but yeah it, do, it does end up with a man behind the curtain that does sort of like magic behind the scenes and nobody nobody um sort of like sees it for what it is unless like you peek. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's what that's about. I will definitely have to find some links. I had, I had (laughs) heard that a while ago, but I, I I had forgotten what the allegory was. Uh, That sounds, that sounds right to me. I'm curious. Like what the ruby, I mean, it would all have symbolism. Like what's the wicked witch of the West and the East and the Ruby Mm -hmm. slippers. I'm all, it almost means something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think in the book it was like white slippers or something like that. Oh, okay. And it, 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 I, I think for, you know, because of technicolor and, uh, you know, oh. the contrast that the filmmakers wanted, they, they made it into Ru- Ruby or something like that. Uh, but, but yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of symbolism. There's like a whole 50 page paper going into the details about what happened <laughs> and so on, that's uh, great. which I, I think I read at one point and that that's where I'm, I've gotten most of it. So. So okay, so let's so we've got the we've got the the Cantillon effect. We've got.